Hey, thank you for clicking on the video. Today we are going to be winterizing this pole building behind me. And so basically this is a really simple winterization. We only have three faucets that need blown out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use compressed air to blow all the lines out, ensuring that there's no water inside the water lines that could freeze and split the pipes or the fittings. Where we live, it does get cold. So any outbuildings that are unheated need to be winterized to prevent damage to the plumbing systems. So what we're gonna be using today is this old Coleman PowerMate air compressor. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be blowing the pipe out. We're gonna hook the air compressor into the plumbing system. This valve is tapped into our home's plumbing system and from this valve it heads down and it heads out to the garage. What we're going to do is we're going to shut off this valve up here so that the home's water supply is no longer feeding the pole barn. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to actually open this ball valve and that then will send air into the pole barn. Okay, so we got the water supply shut off to the garage. We got the air tied in here. We have the air turned on and this valve is open so the air can go all throughout the system out to the garage. Now some people like to start at the furthest fixture away when they're blowing out. That way they can blow all the water out the main line and then go forward from there. Other people like to start at the closest fixture and then work outward. I've tried it both. I kind of think just go until you don't see water. You really do not want to leave any water trapped in the system. One thing about winterizing these, do it a couple times. Take your time because it's going to be easier to not have to fix things in the spring. If you take a little bit more time now, you'll be better off. We're going to start with this one. Now I do believe I took the lever off this one so it could stay live. Let's see if I can turn it off. Now depending on how big your air compressor it is, it's possible that you may have to throttle it down a little bit. Sometimes you can have too much air pressure and you can blow things apart. Just something to be aware of. My air compressor is a residential one. It doesn't ever seem to blow anything apart, so I don't have to worry. Now we'll give it a chance to build up more pressure. We're gonna go try the other faucets. Now that we went through, we did all three fixtures once until they had only air. We're gonna let it rebuild pressure. My air compressor just kicked off. We're gonna go around again. We're gonna blow them out just to make sure that there's nothing and make sure that all the water's gone. At this point, I'm not even too worried because most of the water has gotten out, but it does happen. Sometimes a little bit of water, if it's in the right spot, sometimes it can split a fitting. It's also important to check your plumbing and see if it's a new building to you and you've never winterized it. Some people like to utilize drain plugs. Sometimes there's things that you have to remove and open. So it's worthwhile to look all the plumbing open that you can figure out. Every property is different. This is how I do mine and it works for me, but that may not be the case for you. And we're gonna open this faucet once more for the second time. Let it rebuild some pressure. And what I'll do as well is I'll just go along, I'll open, I'll close, open, close. That little bit of pressure rebuilding in between, that does help if you have a smaller air compressor. We're going to do a second time here. Yep, it's that time of year. So, 
we'll do the same thing. We're at full pressure. We're gonna open it, close it, open it, close it. Now that we got the water lines all blown out, let's talk about the drain lines. All your drains are gonna have a P-trap, a toilet, a sink, any other faucet, sink drain, floor drains, do not forget the floor drains. So basically what it is is the P-trap prevents sewer gas from coming back, so it holds water here. And that water, if it sits in there and it gets cold, it can freeze and split the P-trap. I have a drain plug on mine. If you don't have a drain plug or if you just don't wanna deal with it, you can go to the store, pick up some RV antifreeze. You're gonna to wanna to put some RV antifreeze down the drain, enough to fill the P-trap. So that's what I like to do, but today I'm feeling a little giddy. I think I'm gonna open the drain plug and see how that goes for me this year. I've never done it, but I don't really have RV antifreeze right now, so that's what we're gonna do. And put a little drain underneath it. Oh man like butter. That's way better than running the store. There we go. And just like that. Oh, one more time, because who cares if you do it three or four times as long as you ain't fixing it. Hey, thank you for following along with me today. I really hope this video was helpful or maybe gave you some ideas that you could go on. Ask for help if you don't know what you're doing. If you're new to the property, ask for help from the former homeowner. So do what you can, figure it out, keep running it. Make sure, you know, three or four times, make sure you're not getting any moisture back. Examine all the plumbing. If you see any areas where you think water could hold or possibly there's a plug that someone removed, that's what I got for you. Anyhow, this is what I do, and this is just a simple, simple, simple winterization. And I don't really do much with these water lines, but it's nice for watering the garden, watering the yard to have that outside spigot over here.